for coming Thank you for coming out as well. This topic, this situation, these experiences that our students live are so important for us to know about and so important for us to help them and help the schools deal with and learn more every day how to live with respect and the right kind of love for everyone. We as Catholic educators are very, very concerned about every single student. And when students are dealing with any kind of disrespect, uh, all the way up to very harsh bullying, it's awful. And having been a member on the Safe Schools Advisory Committee from the Board of Trustees for the last two years, I have been, had the privilege of attending and learning a lot more about bullying. And believe me, it is a very serious matter. So I'm very glad we're gathered here tonight to learn and to, from don't worry about size, you can all do something and this can all go forward. I understand the students will get an opportunity as well in February. So thanks and I'm glad to be here. All right, folks, how are you today? Tonight. Tonight. Warm, nice and warm. Good, good. Out of the minus 30 degree weather. They said, you know, it's not going to be as bad as the minus 40, but minus 40, minus 30, how much difference? <laughs> how much difference? Still cold. Still cold, right? So, you know, you're more than welcome to come closer so that you can hear. Don't worry, I won't pick on you or anything. But uh, if uh, you have trouble hearing, just raise your hand and say, hey, speak a little louder. So um, I'd like to start off by saying it's, it's going to be an amazing time working with the school um, and bringing one of our players back uh, in February um, to talk about something very, very important to our organization, the Toronto Argonauts Football Club, um, and everybody that's involved in our program. Uh, for us, it's, um, it's, it's so important because when you just scratch the surface, which is what we're going to do tonight. We're only going to scratch the surface of this issue. Um, but the hope is that you can leave here and say, you know what, I want to find out more about this. I want to dig deep. And that's what, what you need to do. Uh, I'm preaching to those who probably I don't need to preach to. You're here because you care. And, and that's important. Not to say that everybody here, everybody who isn't here doesn't care, but you care. And that shows you care, and it's important that you're here. So uh, with these parent presentations that we do, uh, we like to invite uh, the Toronto Police because we work with um, all the police forces when we go into the schools. Um, and it's, it's a lot of people, I guess, when they, when they hear all oh, the police are working with the school, what does that mean? Is a school in trouble? No, it means we're a community. And that's the idea because we're a community. We work with everybody. So it's not to say that, oh, geez, you know, let's, let's keep this in the confines of the school walls. Let's not worry about outside. Well, that we are outside. Our school walls, it, it's, it, we're about the community. We're not just about what's in the school. If we have issues in a school, we're going to have issues in the community. And then if you have issues in the community, it's going to spread to other communities. So for us, it's caring about the whole community, not just the small, the little micromanaged school, we want to go outside of that, right? So this is why it's important. So today we have Ricardo with us. And he's from Youth and Policing, and he's going to share a little insight into some social media, um, what the Toronto Police is doing, and essentially to give you some helpful tips and, and whatnot to, to let you know that uh, the sky isn't falling. Social media is not taking over our world here, all right? So uh, don't worry, we're, we're okay. But um, they're here, and uh, Ricardo's going to help us out with that. All right, thank you. So one of the first things I'm going to talk to you about is what you're seeing up there. Basically, what, I, what I'm doing here today is we're live streaming this presentation. So maybe myself or Jason, maybe Jason, because I, I hear he's a better speaker than I am. He might say something, and you might be like, wow, my friend really should have heard that. I wish they attended the presentation. You can go to the link that this is broadcasting live right now onto the internet. And you can show your friends exactly what's going on here today. Uh, the link that I, the place where I posted out the link to, and I'm sure Jason will post it on his Twitter account as well. I posted it to 
at youth in policing. Um, and, and the reason I did that is because uh, I work for youth in policing, which is, I don't know how many people have heard of that program. It's a program that hires students uh, from the ages of 15 to 18 to work with Toronto Police in the summer and after school. I'll talk to you a little bit more about that in a bit. But first, who thinks that they're on their own with social media? Who thinks Toronto Police is not out there on social media? Or that social media is just kind of free reign and it's not police and no one's really watching. You can say whatever you want to whoever you want and no one's going to say anything to you. Well, if we flip to, to our first uh, web page there, if you go onto the Toronto Police website and you take a look at who's using social media, if you scroll all the way down, you can see every police officer and every civilian employee of the Toronto Police Service who's using social media. So as you saw there first, uh, uh, Deputy Chief uh, Slowly and every other division has at least somebody who's on, on social media. So let's say you have a problem in your community and you, or a problem in your neighborhood and you're wondering, hmm, who can I talk to? I don't want to call the police. You can always tweet somebody. And you can ask, what's going on? I saw this happening. Can you help me out there? And, and, and you can see there's a lot of police officers who are out there, so you're not alone on social media. It just keeps going, longer than I was expecting to talk for. <laughs> um, so if you click on our next tab there, right at the top, yep. we have lists. So let's say you're going to an event, a very important event, or a big event. What are some big events that we have in the city? Maybe Caravana, the air show. Can we just scroll down there? You can click on any one of those lists, and any big official, any sponsor, anybody who has a share in that in that event, I don't mean to share it money-wise, I mean Toronto Police is going to be at that event, or certain officers are going to be at that event. If something goes wrong and you're there, who do you want to talk to or who do you want to be listening to? You go and you click on any one of those lists, let's say the Green Cup. You want to click on it? All right, sure. That was a good year. And anybody who's there or anybody who has who has a connection to the Grey Cup or that event is there. So we saw CP24 up there, we saw TTC up there. If something goes wrong, TTC is going to be tweeting how to get people out of there, what subways are going to be running, what, uh, what buses are going to be running. That, that's where you can find that. There's a, a Staff Sergeant Chris Body. he's a big social media user with Toronto Police. He's going to be tweeting, hey, this part of the, the area might not be too safe. You might want to veer here. Here's where the safety is. Here's where you should get going. This is how you can make your way home. So you click on any one of those lists, you can look through them if you want at home, and you can see basically what, what you can do in case there's an emergency at certain events. And that's our uh, that's the Toronto Police Twitter handle, if anybody wants to follow there as well. Then we can click on the next one. This is switching gears a little bit. This is showing, this is more for the safety of students and, and youth, and your kids, right? They're important to you. You want them to be successful in the future. You want them to be successful now. A lot of students think, and even myself when I was younger, you post something online, and my friends are going to see it. Nobody else is really going to care. We look at this video here, which is put together by youth and policing students. That basically shows maybe one year down the road, five years down the road, ten years down the road, this could catch up to you. Do you want to hit that? Amy Young. Hi, Amy, how are you? Thanks for coming in. Okay, Amy, your resume is quite impressive, and you interviewed extremely well, and your record is a good check out. And I really do think it'd be a great fit for this company. But it is your policy to conduct online searches with all potential candidates, which I'm sure you find as well. There isn't anything there that you wouldn't want me to find now, is there? What goes online stays online. Think before you post. Okay, so you might post something online and you think, only my friends are going to see this, I'll post this up, I'll get a few likes and then I'll take it down. 
then you do a quick Google search of your name, and the top images is maybe you at a party having a blast of a time. Now, no one's saying you can't go out and have a great time, and your kids can't go out and have a great time, but really, does it need to be on, on the internet for their employer to see? What I always say is, if you wouldn't post it, if you wouldn't have your tweets on, on a board behind you as your boss is talking to, as your parents are talking to, as your teacher's talking to, do you really want to have it online where everybody else can see it? Now switching the gear a little bit to safety about when you're on social media. Uh, some people get targeted for whatever reason by online bullying. People will sit behind a screen and they think, wow, this is a great way that I can get to people and nobody's going to know who I am. What are some things that somebody might do if they, they're a target of online bullying? Carbon copy uh, Facebook templates. Like, you, you understand what I mean? Like, they'll create an account mm -hmm. of their child and start. Right. So somebody could create an account and pretend to be somebody else, and then you can they can bother you for a whole night or, or a week or whatever, and then you finally decide to go tell somebody, and they've deleted that account. So now, what should you have done? Absolutely. You take a Snapchat of whoever is bothering you, whatever account is bothering you. You maybe take the URL of that account. On Twitter, every tweet has an individual tweet ID. If you copy that, you put it into a Word document, you save that. When you go to tell somebody, does this school have a school resource officer? So that could be your first option to who you'd want to go to. You'd go to the school resource officer, you'd advise your children to go to the school resource officer, and they would know what to do from there. But if they have nothing to go by, they can't really help you. Another thing you can do, has everybody heard of Crime Stoppers here? So Crime Stoppers deals a lot with violence happening out on the streets, with crime happening on the streets, with robberies, with assaults, all of that kind of stuff. Is, is bullying a crime? Does it really bother people? So that's another place where somebody might go if they want, if, if someone's bothering them, or if someone's bothering their friend and they don't want to, they don't want to be known. It, there's legislation in place that it's illegal for Crime Stoppers to trace back to somebody that submitted a tip. Now, there's a story that when I was a student, I was told about Crime Stoppers. Is there was a, a big bombing that was supposed to happen in LA, and I, somebody submitted a tip, basically telling the police exactly what was going on and where, and the police got to it and it saved a lot of people. President Obama caught on to that, and he wanted to thank the person personally who submitted that tip. He wasn't even able to do that. Now, if the president can't do that for somebody who's, who's threatening a, a big city and giant bombing uh, tons of lives, it shows you that if you submit a tip to help out your friend, it's really going to do you no harm. So if we could just click submit a tip. Now, we won't actually go through and submit a tip because we don't want to tie up their lines. But when you click submit a tip, this is something that you, you might get. And at first, I, I went on this just before coming here today, and I'm like, wow, that's a lot of information. I'm not going to have a lot of information if somebody's bothering me online. So some of the stuff you might put, if you know, if you actually know the person, you can fill out a little bit more. Suspect's name, or the person's name, the nickname they might have, and you just scroll down. The really important part here is the crime notes. So you would basically, if you fill out just a little bit at the top, the name or the username or whatnot, and you put in the notes and you say, this person is constantly harassing uh, this username, um, and I'm sure there's somewhere on there where you could. Yeah, so we have bullying, uh, bullying school age kids. I'm sure that I think there's cyber bullying on there. There's, there's a whole bunch of things that you can see which one is more appropriate to what's happening to you or your friend. Even if it's happening to you and you don't want to go tell a police officer, you can submit it saying, I could submit something saying, hey, my friend Ricardo Rujo is really being bothered by this person. At the end of the day, it's still helping me. I'm getting what I need. Somebody's gonna gonna try to help me. So you fill out what you know. <clears throat> you can upload a photo if you have a good screen cap of what went wrong, and then you put in a little password. Now, how many people have heard of Prime Stoppers giving out rewards? And you might think, how can they get me a reward without tracing it back to me? So after you submit a tip and you put in the password, you get a, a special code, and that code is assigned only with that tip. Then if there's a reward that comes out of, uh, out of something, uh, which would be publicized, you would sign in with that, that, that code that you get and that password that's unique to you, and it would tell you there's been a $100 reward 
awarded to this person. It gives you uh, it gives you a bank to go to to get your check. You cash that out anonymously, and that's it. So it's not like they're tracking you. That's they do it completely anonymously. Nobody ever has to know. Another resource that we have for dealing with online bullying, and what does online bullying sometimes lead to, unfortunately? Suicide. Suicide. So we have a thing started up with Real Time Crisis. It's called Real Time Crisis. It's with a Toronto police officer, Scott Mills, who was supposed to be speaking today, and a crisis street nurse, Anne Marie Batten. And what they do, and myself, I'm helping out as well, what they do is anybody in the world, it started off as something that's supposed to be in Toronto, but quickly nobody else was doing it, so it got worldwide. Somebody tweets, I'm going to kill myself. This is it. The, I'm gonna pick up. Uh, I'm gonna go grab the drugs, take the drugs, and it's gonna be the end of me. How many people know what to do in a case like that? Not me. I might have seen it a couple times when I was younger. I had absolutely no idea what to do. Now, what you can do with real time crisis is you would you would tag you would tweet that person back and say, "Here, real time crisis can help you." Even if that person doesn't want us to know, we've already been tagged, and we'll start talking to that person. And be like, "Hey, do you need some help?" Um, I'm a, the, the, the street nurse will be like, I'm a nurse, can I help you with anything? Even if the person says no and it looks like the person is really attempting self-harm, there's a whole process in which we can actually get that person help. So if you want to share this among, with your, your students and with your children, at Real Time Crisis on Twitter, it's something that can save lives. It's something that every youth should know about. I wish I knew a little bit more about it when I was a student, but that's definitely something that Social media used in a good way. We always hear the bads about social media, but at real time crisis and, and some of the different things I've talked to you about today is definitely positive for social media. Does anybody have any social media related questions for me? Maybe with Toronto Police, maybe with at real time crisis? Not everybody's on Twitter. No. So, so, we also, there's also a Facebook page. Uh, for real time crisis, but real time crisis was developed mainly as a resource for for people to use who are trapped in social media. Of course, you could always call the police officer um, if you see something, and they can come to your house and they can take a look at it. Would be uh, any of the social media networks, so Reddit, MySpace, uh, Twitter, and really anything, and somebody could take care of it that way. This way, it goes directly to a nurse who will try to intervene before having to escalate to a police officer going out there and perhaps get the person more appropriate help. You know, the, um, what's, what's interesting is uh, that social media, because of the, the uh, anonymity of it, um, kids have been no more open up on social media than they would have in the past on the phone. Uh, so that's why social media has become such a great vehicle because they think it's so anonymous that all I'm just going to write is sad note, nobody's going to see it. But they don't realize that many people see it. And, and I know that a lot of cases could have been stopped if people were following them social media, if none people saw it. And, and that's what I, I've heard many times. Uh, that there have been great cases where they've stopped something before they've stopped the traffic, but they've been able to uh, see it and then prevent it. And that's the case. It's, it's a cry for help. And social media has become that, that vehicle. Uh, because I guess the way our society is now, it's, it's, you know, it's the society of the iPad, not the iPad. So people are more on those things than they are speaking out. So it, it's, uh, there's many different vehicles, but that seems to be the root. You know, I still I think I should go on Facebook, but I still haven't added it. Probably won't now. Yeah, so with Real Time Crisis, the first time I heard about it, I was sitting with the uh, with a uh, police officer, Scott Mills, in the media gallery at Toronto Police, and he was telling me pretty much what Real Time Crisis is all about and what it is they did. And he was saying, at, at this moment, somebody in Vancouver referred somebody from Texas to our nurse in Toronto about something going on, this person tweeting whatever it was that was alarming somebody. So somebody in Vancouver saw it and referred it to somebody in Toronto. Social media... It's all on the web page. It's all on the screen. There's no, you don't need to buy a ticket to get anywhere. It's all right there. So this, the, the nurse then engaged with the person it, down, down south that, that was going through some trouble. And I was a little skeptical. I'm like, mm, there's so many players here, and it, it's all over the world. How, how are we going to get this person help? So finally, through talking to the, 
the nurse a little bit. She, she to the, the the person a little bit. The nurse got a little bit more information. She called the police officer. He then called Texas police, and he said, "I'm a police officer with Toronto. This is what I saw. This is what's happening. Do you think you can get this person some help?" And and they said, "Yeah, of course. Uh, we'll let you know if anything." And they hung up. And I'm like, "I could call somebody and say I'm a police officer." And really, who's going to believe me? What's stopping the people down in Texas from saying, "No, nah, we're not going to we're not going to engage this. This could be a waste of time." Not no more than 20 minutes later, Texas police called and said, "We got the person. They're on their way to get help. They they were in a little bit of trouble. Thanks for that." So really, anybody who sees anything worldwide, they could get help. Resources are out there. Unfortunately, sometimes the negative of social media way outweighs the, the, the positive of social media, but there are positive social media accounts like Real Time Crisis out there that can help people. And finally, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Youth and Policing Initiative. Every student wants a job in the summer. Every student wants a job. Well, maybe not every student, but some, a lot of students like to like work, like to get busy. <laughs> but the, pro, the thing with, this, with, with the, this initiative is it's not only work. It's gaining experience, padding your resume. A lot of students who do want to become police officers, this is the, their start. This is where they can, they can make connections. So we're going to flip through a couple of slides really quick. So the Youth and Policing Program was established with the Toronto Police Services Board, the Ministry of Children and Youth Services, and Toronto Police Service. Everybody came together and decided, we need to give students a productive work environment. And it started off with 50 students after school in 2006. A year later, it went to 100 students. A couple of years later, we were at 150 students for the summer. Just two years ago, we expanded to an after-school program for the fall and the winter. And now there's a program going on all year round where students are working with Toronto police officers and Toronto police employees at different units and divisions across the city. So there's an example of something that students might do. These students were doing some graffiti removal. And like I said, to promote youth participation in and exposure to the work environment through diverse educational and productive work assignments. You can see a little bit of what the mandate is. At the end of the day, it's youth getting experience, youth being exposed to the work environment. So this is the eligibility for, the, for youth to be um, selected. So it has to be between the ages of 15 and 18, if you need a resident, eligible to work in Canada, returning to school, and, and you can only do it one time. For the summer program, which is what we're hiring for now, it's from Monday, June 30th to Friday, August 22nd. Full-time summer employment, 10.90 an hour. Students get paid for this, this experience, and they work in different police divisions and locations across the city. This is what the, uh, the application process is like. You apply online, uh, you have an interview, there's a security clearance, and you get the offer of employment and hired. That, that's what the process would be like. So if you're going to apply, you have to have an updated resume. You can you have to use Microsoft Explorer, um, Windows 7, or higher. You have to have a valid email address. You got to sit down long enough so you can finish the whole application, or else it will time you out. And you have to ensure that you have all the correct information available to you. The deadline is February 7th. And those are some things that students get to do. All students basically get the opportunity to go check out the SWAT team, the CSI, the dogs, the horses, the boats, all that kind of stuff. They can be involved in Caravana, Rookie Bowl. They get to go and get a, a tour of Queen's Park. And if you have any questions or anything like that, that's the contact information. I'm going to have brochures outside um, at the end of it if anybody's interested to spread the word a little bit. If anybody has any questions about the Youth and Policing Program or anything I talked about social media, I can do what I can to answer them. But so parents are probably curious, but uh, students become are more savvy at, at online, like doing things so they can't get caught, mm -hmm. like uh, logging in from another computer or another you know IP address. Let's say, um, are the police working at being able to catch the students even if they go onto another computer? So every computer has an IP address, and if you if you're going to do something, you always have to log in. So you're always accounted for. So some students think I'm going to be a little bit more clever. I'm going to do it from school. Well, how do you get? I couldn't get access to the Wi-Fi here. How do you, how do you have to get access to a school or to a computer at school? So you have a username or password. So you have a username or password, and you log in. So the school knows that from this minute to this minute, a student was a certain student was using that computer. 
you go to the library, same thing, I believe you have to sign in with your, your library card. So wherever somebody goes to use a computer, they're always accountable for it. Is that true in internet cafes? That's what I'm I'm not 100% sure about how internet cafes work, but I believe that this, uh, somebody that, went, that goes there still has a certain username or something that they would have to sign in with. And if you're signing in with your own account on there and, and there's a trend that this account signed in here and it's signed in here, it could always be looked back at, you know, to trace back to a certain person. Any other questions? Well, I'm going to be outside at the end, and I have some cards for Crime Stoppers how to submit a tip. Um, I didn't really touch on that, but you could submit a tip online like we saw there. You could submit a tip through phoning it in, or you could submit a tip even through text message now for, for people who don't really want to go through the trouble of calling in. So I'm going to have some information on that. I'm going to have some information on the Youth and Policing Initiative uh, outside when we're done here today. So now I'm going to turn it over to Jason. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> that was excellent. What do you mean you're not a good speaker, man? That's great. Uh, I'm Jason Calera from the Toronto Argonauts Football Club, and I hope to uh, be uh, as informative. And no, you can say Argos later. Right now, I got to talk about bullying prevention, but you can give us a chance later. That's fine. Um, I, uh, I'm going to be back at your um, this school on February 11th to share my story, which I might even be able to share a bit of tonight. Uh, depending on time, I want to see if I can get you guys out of here by 8 o'clock so you can catch some of the Leaf game. Uh, <laughs> right? See, I'm looking out for Toronto sports, right? That's right, there's hockey, right? So, um, I, uh, our program has been in existence for, this is its 13th year. Um, and uh, there's good and bad about that. The good is that uh, it's a popular program. The bad is that everybody says, oh my gosh, aren't you guys making a difference in bullying? It's still out there. Bullying is probably going to be out here uh, even long after I'm gone. And uh, that's the harsh reality. Um, no program out there, I think, can eradicate bullying completely. Uh, I might be wrong, and I hope I'm wrong, but I think that what these programs do is provide tools for students to deal with them. And that's the thing. And it's not just students, it's adults as well. Because we all know that bullying is not just at an a, a education level, it's also at the, um, the working level. And, that's, uh, and we've seen many cases of that. I mean, uh, across North America, we've seen cases of that in other locker rooms, right? And I don't like to point fingers tell from the border, but we've heard stories about that. And everybody has their, their opinions as to why it happened or, or why it shouldn't happen or, or why didn't somebody do something. Or, well, we're here to provide the tools so when that happens, we have a way to address it. And that's the idea here. So we'll, uh, we'll go on here. Um, so like I said, it's our uh, bullying prevention program. And um, the need. A lot of people tell me some things about, well, do you really need it? I mean, sometimes, and what I've heard many times, and, and you may have been uh, a person that heard this, ah, oh, you know, what, what doesn't kill kills you, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. So going through bullying is going to make you tougher, right? That's the thing. That's what a lot of people told me. So you know why you're going to go through bullying? Don't worry about it. Because later when somebody picks on you, you're going to get a thick skin. I'm just making your, thin, your skin thick. No. You see, there was just a study by Duke University, and um, they, they followed students from elementary school all the way till the end of school. And this took a while, obviously, but by the end of the study, and you can look it up, basically by the end of the study, they found that there was a high incidence of adults who suffered from anxiety and depression and even suicidal thoughts when they went through bullying on any end. Now that's startling because no, they didn't grow through it. Yes, there are going to be some people out there who are going to be able to get through it, not get over it. Right? Because if I ask people here if you've ever been bullied, a lot of people will put their hand up and you can almost tell me the, the time when you were bullied. You can almost tell me who it was. And that sticks in your head. That does affect you somehow, some way, because it's in there. It's in your psyche, right? So there's a lot of statistics. The one that we really care about is when a friend steps in, bullying stops 57% of the time in 10 seconds or less. 
If that's the case, then why aren't they stepping in? Well, those, that's, that's the end all question. That's a big question. And, and if I can give you, there are many answers why, but one of them is because it's not the thing to do. It's not the popular thing to do. And it's also not the thing where it's not going to make me safe. Well, we're trying to correct that. We're trying to let people know that, you know, there were people that stepped in and there are safe ways to do it. And that's the idea here. There's safe ways of doing it. You know, we don't say, hey, if you see bullying, step in the middle and try to break it up. Probably not a good idea. But there are alternatives. You need to tell an adult, number one, and that's what we say. An adult needs to know. Some adult needs to know or somebody else needs to know what's happening. Because at, the, at that point, it's just something that's happening. Nobody really knows what's going on. It needs to be spoken about, no matter what. All right, here's some facts, not a conflict. So many times I hear uh, when we do a presentation with elementary kids, um, you know, they might be uh, walking and somebody says something, and he bullied me. We don't want to get into the sense where it's an overused term, right? And that's what happens a lot. Sometimes it's like, oh, they kicked the soccer ball at me. We're playing the game, and they kicked the soccer ball at me and hit me in the head. They bullied me. No, that was part of the game. Oh, they're playing tag, and you hear a little kid, they're playing tag, and they, they tag me and knock me over. They bullied me. Well, you're playing tag. These things can happen, right? Bullying is not a conflict. It's not an argument between two people. It's not two people saying, hey, we have a disagreement. No. What bullying is is when one person takes contempt from somebody else. Plain and simple, right? And that is where you... Basically, go after somebody, it's repetitive, it's deliberate, it's an intent to harm, and there's no mistake about it. A person willingly knows they did something wrong. They know that they said something to offend somebody. And when they're told that it's the wrong thing, hey, what are you doing, that's not the right thing, someone who is bullying will continue. Will continue. Sometimes, and the hope is that when somebody says, you got to cool it, the hope is that they stop, that that bullying stops. Because what happens is you attack somebody's psyche physically, verbally, emotionally, or on the internet. And you're attacking that person, and I call it an attack because it's an inflict of terror on somebody, and you're making them change their life. That's what's happening. You're making somebody not go down a certain hallway. You're making somebody not go to the cafeteria at that time. You're making somebody sit at the back of the class because if so-and-so sees me, they're going to say something again, and I can't take it today. That's when bullying becomes a big problem because you're affecting the way somebody lives. Right? So that's, that's where I have a big problem. Um, it's an emotionally, an emotionally scarring situation for someone, for life for life, because you will constantly remember what you were called. You will constantly remember the way somebody looked at you. And that is something that we've got to correct now, because later in life, it's harder to deal with, right? It's, it's, it's a lot harder to deal with. We need to get the help immediately before it's too late. Um, if I were to come to you and say, hey, guess what, we're gonna bring this Huddle up bullying prevention program to your school, and you'll never have another bullying problem again. You know what? I'm not one of those guys that travels in a caravan and sells potions. It's not a magic potion. No program is a magic potion. You need community. You need everybody, and it's the beginning. It's a means to an end. That's the bottom line. All right? So that's, that's what you have to understand. And I'm not going to sit here and say, when we bring in a player, we're going to save everybody. No. We've received testimonies where kids have actually changed an attitude, but we still have a lot of work ahead of us. Some potential signs if somebody's being bullied. Now, I don't want you to look at this and say, oh boy, my son or daughter's doing just that. Ah, they're being bullied. There are some things in there. I mean, they may just not want to go to school that day because they have a test. Trust me. <laughs> done it before. But uh, what you want to look for is a combination of these things, right? And sometimes it's a drop in grades mysteriously. <clears throat> they're doing really good in school, all of a sudden their grades have dropped dramatically. 
What's that from? Could be from the fact that somebody keeps picking on them because they keep doing well in school, and they decide, you know what? I'm going to tank it on purpose. I'm going to do bad to people like me. Now, the hope is they don't, they don't end up doing that. But that's a sudden drop in grades. Change in, change in friends. All of a sudden, the people they come home with or the people they're talking to, they don't talk to anymore. And I hope that you become that detective to kind of find out who their friends are. So you say to them, hey, you know, who are you hanging out with at school? Ask them that question. Just, just find out a bit. So this way, you can keep on, on it and say, that's great. You know, that's good. So how are they doing? And sometimes the reaction you get, so how's so-and-so? Uh, whatever. I don't, I don't care. I don't talk to them anymore. Okay? Why? Uh, nothing. So you don't need to know. Trust me, these things I know because I used to do. Hey, how was your day at school today? Fine. Yeah, it was good. Great. That's it. Great. What you do in math? Uh, no math. That's what I did. And you'll hear why in a second. But that's what I did. So we'll, again, a lot of this stuff, I'll leave in a PowerPoint for the school. I'll send the PowerPoint so you guys have it. If you ever need it, look at it. Again, we're scratching the surface here. Here's some do's and don'ts, right? When you hear bullying, your son or daughter comes home and says, I'm being bullied. Don't freak out. Last thing you need to do. What? You're being bullied? What? Let's go. We're going right down there, right to the office. I'm going to talk to the principal or the vice principal. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Something better be done. Oh, heads are going to roll. you got to be calm because guess what? They just opened up to you. If you freak out the next time something happens, they're not coming to you. My mom used to freak out. Why? Because back where she's from, uh-uh, bullying doesn't happen because you fight back. Right? That's what I was told. So I, I'm not telling my mom or my dad because the last thing I need is them coming to the school. That'll make it great. So instead, I just kept it quiet. Right? What you don't want to do is say, ah, uh, you know, don't rationalize for the bully, the person bullying. Let's call them the person the bully, not the bully. I don't like to give people a label. Person doing the bullying, don't rationalize, say, oh, they're going through a tough time. They probably have a lot of skeletons in their closet. Don't worry about it. When you start doing that, the kid doesn't care. Your son or daughter doesn't care about that person. That person's causing, giving their, making their life hell. They don't really care that you're rationalizing. That's their life. They're having a bad life, but why me? Why me? Who cares about them? Care about me. That's what you want to look at. Focus is on your son or daughter. Also, don't try to solve all their problems. Give them some suggestions of what they can do. Tell them, you know, talk to somebody at the school. Talk to an adult. You know, talk to your friends. Once you see if, if maybe you can talk to one of your friends that you might hang out with, right? Try to give them solutions so that they can solve. They can, maybe they can solve, right? But then keep with the problem. Um, work with the school. Investigate together. It's an investigation at the end of the day. Chances are a person doing the bullying has bullied other people, right? It's good that you're here as parents. Get to know each other, right? If you are your parent, your, your parents of kids going in the same grade or something, you never know the link, right? You really never know the link. Oh, it's going to die in the battery. <laughs> that could be an issue. So I do have one here. But uh, you don't want to uh, run in a situation where. I'm just saying that. Um, 